Hi, I'm Christina from Leafy Luster and today I want to propagate my Anthurium Crystallinum. This one right here. Let's do a little head test. It's approximately the size of my head and I've been wanting to propagate this plant for over a year now. This leaf looks amazing, don't get me wrong, but there are different leaves on here that don't look as great. So I would want to restart the plant anyway. I want to take some propagations for my shop. Obviously, I didn't come unprepared. I have been air layering this plant for over a year now. So I imagine these roots being substantial. As you guys might know, I'm a big advocate for air layering. It works best with sphagnum moss and especially with anthurium. They have really thick roots so you can untangle the moss later on really well. That's a big plus point for me. I tend to propagate all of my anthuriums this way if I have the time to prepare for it. I don't think you need to leave the moss on for a year like I did. I just kind of forgot about it and never done it. I think three to six months should be enough to make some root growth happen in here and then you can do your stem cuttings. With that said, let's unpack this baby. The method is pretty simple really. You just need some sphagnum moss, wrap it around the stem like so, cover it with cling film or Ziploc bag, something like that, and then try to keep it moist, that's it. Now the keeping moist part is always the most difficult for me personally. You can already see all of the roots growing inside of the moss ball. It's quite a lot. The least fun part for me is always untangling the moss. If it's too hard to detach, then try to moisten it. I'll be back when I'm done. Now that I got this going, finally, and don't ask me how long this took, it was quite a lot of roots and I wouldn't recommend you leaving on the moss for a year because it will be a lot of work. I am left with all of these roots that look pretty good. That's like a whole ass root system right here. And there's also a lot of roots growing into the soil. With the top part untangled, we can now uproot the plant and see how the roots look in the soil. Check, they're healthy, they actually look good. I was thinking the plant would have some sort of rotten root system actually, just because of the state of the leaves and the yellowing, but maybe it's some sort of fungus or bacterial infection then. Hmm. I got this plant I think like one and a half years ago from plants.com I think it was. It was a little tiny baby plant. But what I want to say is it's actually a really quick grower in my opinion. Check out this root system. Isn't this beautiful? Just healthy, white roots, nothing is squishy, really cool. This right here is the last root I can use for a top cutting. And because these leaves are a little bit ugly, I think I'm just going to take a top cutting regardless of the roots that are not here <laughs> and just stick it into some moss and hope for the best. Getting my two wheels ready, Ooh. using a fresh blade for this. On these anthuriums it's a little bit harder to cut since the nodes are so close together. So each line that you see is a node. You would have to cut in between them and also not damage any auxiliary buds. What I like to do with these anthuriums is just take bigger chunks of the stem as a cutting. First cut will be the top cutting, down here probably. Okay, would you look at this? Oh, it has like a pinkish rosy color, that's so cute. We have a really clean cut on the top cutting and then also a few aerial roots here and here. I'll try to make single node cuttings if I can, because we have nice roots attached. 
this would be the ideal cutting. We already have a nice root system and then a piece of stem with a auxiliary bud right here. This must be the tiniest cutting I ever took. We have a few stem cuttings with leaves attached. So, let's get some soil and a few pots. All of the cuttings with roots attached I will immediately pot up into soil. And I want to make sure that the stem piece just lies on top of the soil, that it's not buried inside the soil. Some of these really have a lot of root system on here, which is funny because I have just the smallest little piece of stem and then it has such a giant root system. It's kind of hilarious actually. <laughs> I always feel like eating spaghetti whenever I have to pot up cuttings with a lot of roots. I always turn it around in the pot like I would spaghetti on a spoon to coil it up. I mean, it also looks like noodles, so maybe that's why I'm thinking of it. Water on top. Ta-da! All done. I've got five pots with stem cuttings. Now let's take care of these stem propagations. I could just pop them in moss, but I think I want to try it with perlite today because I like perlite way better. Ta-da! This is everything I need for it. Fill it halfway with perlite maybe and be a little bit careful with the dust. And now I'm just going to pop in the top cutting. I want to fill it with water like one third or halfway to secure it from falling over. I am going to use some cling film. This also ensures some heightened humidity inside of the jar. And just like that, I have my top cutting propagating in perlite. <laughs> For the other two cuttings, I will just try out plain water. I have never propagated anthurium in water yet, so this might be the time to do it. And this, my friends, is how you propagate anthurium crystallinum the safest possible way. Air layer beforehand, use clean, sharp tools to make a clean cut. And if you want to add a little bit more success on top of it, Pop these babies into a prop box, greenhouse or grow tent with some good lighting, warmth and humidity and you will be a-okay. I already propagated my Anthurium Veracrianum like this. You can check out the video right here. I will see you next time. Until then, enjoy your plants and goodbye!